Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make your own Ethernet cables. Um, it's actually pretty simple. Um, and in here you can see I have an Ethernet cable. This is a Cat6 cable. I got it from Amazon.com. It was about $10 um, for 100 feet. And, you know, you can't really expect much quality out of that because it was only $10. But, you know, what the heck. It was It's for home use, not professional use. Um, I also got a kit, um, which you're also going to need for this video. Um, it includes an RJ45 crimper. And, uh, <laughs> I know I screwed up something. Um, and this wire cutter and stripper. Now, technically, you don't need this because most uh, crimpers these days have wire cutters included in them, like this one. Uh, but I use this one uh, to strip the wires just because it's a lot easier. Also, in my kit, I got a punch down tool. Um, but I'm not going to show you how to use that today. Um, it's really used for um, punching down wires into these... Uh, slots uh, for a keystone in the wall um, so anyways let's get started with the video so you're also gonna need of course which I didn't mention an RJ45 jack or head um, and here you can see I have a boot um, which stops you from breaking off the uh, the clip from the head um, and first, we're going to take the boot, if you have one, and shove it down the wire as far as you want, just so that it's out of your way. We'll put it back onto the head later. And then we're going to take your wire stripper, measure down roughly an inch, and uh, yeah, let's show you what's going on here, and lightly strip the wire and twist the uh, wire stripper around the wire. Be careful not to go too deep into the shielding because you can cut into the wires here uh, and that'll make the wire unusable or the ethernet cable unusable, <laughs> unusable uh, because it'll interrupt the data if it's cut so let's separate these wires um, and also if you do cut into the wire most people uh, just rip down this shielding and cut off uh, what they cut into and just use this down here because you rip this down and you don't have to worry about cutting into the wire. So anyways, let's separate these wires. You get four colors, blue, red, green, and orange. And then you'll get this piece in the center, which is, you know, just plastic, um, that, which separates the wires. And uh, you're going to want to cut this off. Now, if you have a Cat5 cable, uh, you're probably going to see string instead of plastic. Um, so don't really worry about that. So let's cut this down. Let's get these wires really out of the way. We don't want to cut the wires. Cut it down as far to the base as possible. All right. So that's pretty good. Uh, let's bring the wires back up. And we're also going to be separating the wires from themselves. I found a tip online where you can take the shielding uh, from the Ethernet cable and shove it in between the wires. And it makes it easy to separate the wires. All right. So green. Yeah, that's all right. Anyways. Now, you can also do it the old style way of just untwisting it, but it really depends on your personal preference of what you want to do. I just like to use the uh, shielding because it's a little faster and easier. And next, we're going to order these wires. So today we're going to be using the T56B uh, standard for Ethernet cables. Um, it's the new it's the new standard and it's just what we're going to be using so this standard specifies that you um, go in order from striped orange to solid orange striped green stri uh, solid blue striped blue solid green striped red and solid red pretty simple um, a little hard if you're colorblind like me um, but let's just give it a go give me a minute to do this All right, so here you can see I generally ordered the wires pretty loosely. Um, so to fix this, um, or actually what we want to do next, is just press down firmly on the wires, and this will help keep them in order and straighten them out, and bring the wires closer together while keeping them in order. Try to straighten them out at the same time. Now here I can see I messed up the blue by accident while doing this. So I'm going to fix that. Alright, 
So that's, uh, okay, I guess. Um, the next part is to be, is actually going to be, uh, cutting off the excess wire. So make sure it's really straight and check that the wires are in the same order or the correct order, actually. Press that down a little more. Okay. And next, we're just going to cut off about... Uh, and leave maybe about that much. You're going to want to leave a little extra just in case you mess up. And just to be able to shove the extra wire into the uh, cord or the uh, head. <laughs> so cut off the excess with your wire cutter. And it should be about that large. That's, that's fine, I guess. Uh, and then for the next part, we're going to put on the... Uh, RJ45 head onto the wires or into the wires. Um, line it up with pin one, which starts from the top left of the bottom of the RJ45 head. And just carefully put it in. Now, this is probably one of the hardest parts because you have to make sure that you don't get the wires out of order. So do it carefully. I think I may have messed up. And maybe not. So check it again. Press the wire in as far as it can go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't break it. Um, and check the wires again. Make sure they're in, the they're in the correct order. And I can see mine are in the correct order. So for one of the final steps, or next to the final step, uh, we're going to crimp it. Now, I'm not so sure that this wire actually works. I think uh, I screwed up on this end by accident, so it may or may not work with my uh, network tester. But anyways, to crimp it, just stick it in your crimper, make sure it's pressed in all the way, and then just crimp it down firmly. Um, and what this does basically is it just presses in these pins to the uh, wires, the corresponding wires, and activates it. It also presses down this piece of plastic and stops you from being able to pull the wire out. Um, before we put the boot on, we're gonna check it with our network tester, which I didn't mention before. Um, this is about $5 on Amazon.com also. It's not the best network tester in the world, but it works for this application. So let's plug it in. And hope it works. So this starts from 4 for some reason. And as you can see, my wire works. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, let's slow it down a bit. 6, 7, 8. Um, and you can see all pins match um, the corresponding number. Now, if um, you notice with your ne ne network tester that when one lights up and on your remote another number lights up, that means you probably uh, disordered the wires and you're going to have to redo the head or one of the heads. Um, in that case, um, you're probably going to have to find uh, which one you disordered and cut it off. Or if you just don't know, you're just going to have to cut both off and re redo them both. Another common uh, problem is that not all the lights light up, and that could be because of one of, of two reasons, and that might be because of uh, the fact that you may have made the wires too short and they're not reaching the pins, or that you simply just not have uh, crimped down the wire, uh, the uh, head, hard enough or firmly enough. So to fix that, just crimp it down again and do it firmly, uh, and that should fix the uh, problem. And then finally, put the boot on the ethernet cord. And this boot is pretty tight. And there you go. It's a nice looking wire and it works. So that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, subscribe.